We're taking you up to Mount Titlis, one of the most scenic destinations in Switzerland, high in the Alps. It's an easy day trip from Lucerne, so we're leaving our Hotel de Balance in the heart of Lucerne where we've been staying. We leave after breakfast and we'll be back to town by 2.30 in the afternoon. Easy walk alongside the river. In a few minutes, we arrive at the train station in Lucerne, a very nice, modern, and functional building, of course. It's easy to enter the station through the lower level, down by escalators, and walk through their little shopping mall, a variety of sundries and foods available here. Back up the escalators, you'll see the signboard with the train schedules and departure platforms. And you keep going up now. The ticket office is one flight up from ground level. Here you can purchase your train ticket as well as the ticket for the cable car that you'll need at the end of the train line to bring you up to Mount Titlis and then back down again. Well, this morning we're heading up to Mount Titlis from Lucerne. And the best way to get there is simply take the train. It's a lovely train ride from Lucerne to Engelberg, about one hour, very scenic. And then you change from the train to a cable car at Engelberg and you ride up Mount Titlis. It's about 10,000 feet high, so you want to be prepared for some cold weather. It'll be freezing most likely because there's a glacier and so we are guaranteed to have snow on the ground. And we're hoping for clear weather because there's a very nice view when you get up to Titlis if the weather's clear, which is generally the case. Sometimes it's partly cloudy and you wait uh, five, 10 minutes for the clouds to part and you'll uh, almost always have a very nice view looking into the Central Alps, the Bernese Oberland. On a good day, you can see all the way to the Jungfrau, which is in the middle of the Swiss Alps. So it's a lovely ride. Altogether, it takes about two hours from Lucerne to the top of Titlis and then spend about one hour up there and then two more hours coming back down to Lucerne. So we're uh, planning to catch the uh, 841 train, and then five hours later, we're back in town. Roughly, we should be back here about 2.30. And that gives you enough time, one hour at the top, you'll find it sufficient. And we'll show you more when we get up there. If you have the Swiss travel pass, there's no charge for the train ride, and you get a discount on the cable car. There is one departure every hour to Engelberg, and of course they famously run on schedule. Well folks, uh, let me just tell you a little bit about this ride. It's uh, one hour to Engelberg, which is the end of this train line. It'll make a few stops along the way, but we don't get out, we don't change trains. Here we go. And it's very scenic, as you'll soon find out. Oh, the first 15 minutes we're going through the suburbs of Lucerne. And then we're into the countryside. You're gonna see some cows in the pasture. Uh, also, you'll see the, the green fields, the grass and clover. That's the silage. They're growing crops for the uh, animal feed and they harvest it and roll it up in the uh, white drums and store it for the winter. And they're able to get maybe uh, three crops out of one plot of land during the season. And they fertilize it. We might be lucky enough to witness the uh, fertilizing operation. And then at Engelberg, we get out of this train and then we continue on, we walk over to the cable car. It's about a half a mile walk to the cable car. And then we uh, trade these t train tickets in for cable car tickets. We go to the window and it's an even trade. And then we go up. So it's from here to the top of the mountain, it's two hours, 11 o'clock, we'll be up there. The outskirts of Lucerne have been steadily growing in recent years with more housing, but it's still a small city, population under 100,000, quarter million in the broader metropolitan area. Garden plots for flowers and vegetables by the apartments. One of many great things about traveling by train is it's very easy to strike up conversations and you'll run into all sorts of international travelers. While the train is quite comfortable, it's narrow gauge, different than the intercity trains or international trains. And there's a nice view of Lake Lucerne briefly a couple of times as you're riding along. Actual travel time between Lucerne and Engelberg is usually just 43 minutes. 
the train does stop three or maybe four times along the way, pick up a few people or drop them off. There are various hiking trails along the way and some activity centers. One of the famous recreation centers is Roots Valley, very popular with the little kids. You'll see groups here getting off and there's a van that'll shuttle them up to their mountain plateau. It's about 1,600 meters above sea level and there's a lot of activities for young and old up there. Nature, relaxation, real good times year round. Alternatively, you could drive from Lucerne to Engelberg if you have a rental car. There's parking available in Engelberg. Or you could come up by tour bus. There's package tours that you can purchase at a time or in Lucerne. But we always find that the nicest way to get there is by train to Engelberg at the end of the train line and then transferring up to the cable car to the mountaintop. Unusual to see a parade of cows along the main roadway there. And you'll see other farming activities. There's going to be tractors. They'll be out cutting the grass. They'll be fertilizing. They'll be stacking up their woods and other kinds of farming activities along the way. Stay alert looking out the windows and you'll have lots of photo opportunities. You'll notice most homes are built in that traditional chalet style with the wooden architecture and the steep roof to keep the snow off. The larger buildings are usually multifamily. You'll have a second look at the same scenery on your way back after visiting Titlas because it's the same train track round trip ride. However, you might be a little tired after the Titlas excitement. So it's best to pay full attention on the way there, especially if you have good weather. It might get cloudy or even rainy on the way back. I've done this excursion about 25 times and never get bored of it. It's always so beautiful. Really, getting to Titlas is half of the pleasure of the day. You'll find that once you're up on the mountaintop, that's also a lot of fun running around in the snow. But this train ride is one of the more scenic rides in Switzerland, and that's really saying quite a lot. So don't look at the train ride as just simply a necessary burden of getting to Titlas, not at all. You want to take full advantage of that beautiful scenery out the windows, both sides of the train, left and right as you go. Neither side is better. They're both good. Look for the little round church with its onion dome steeple and mountain backdrop. Slide the train windows down for your best photographs and view. That way you don't get any reflection of the window glass in your picture. And also you get a more unobstructed view. You can even stick your head out the window a little bit to look forwards or backwards. If it's too cold, then you've got to keep them up for courtesy to other passengers. But usually between spring and fall, it's fine. Pull them down. If you paid the higher price for the first class seating, you might find the windows don't go down. It's an air-conditioned car. Whereas in second class, it's even better because the windows usually do slide down, giving you better access to that good shot. And you'll save some money. Second class train in Switzerland is almost as good as the first class. And sometimes you'll get a better view. As the train gets closer to Engelberg, the mountains get higher and you'll see quite a bit of snow up top. The seating arrangement on this train is nicely set up so that you can have conversations and make some new friends along the way. The Swiss contented cows enjoy their outdoor pastures throughout most of the year. And that's one of the reasons they produce such great cheese and milk chocolate. There is one very tall waterfall along the way. And you'll notice there's the river that flows along the train tracks that did cause a problem some years ago. There was a big flood and it washed out some of the tracks. As a result, the Swiss rebuilt the train tracks and created a much smoother and faster ride. Another example of a dramatic vista you can get if you'll just stick your head out the window and look forward. Just don't lean out too far. Several covered wooden bridges offer scenic highlights to look for. There is a footpath that continues along most of this routing. You could walk along the stream and 
There are some side trails. There's actually some other cable cars that will take you up the side mountains. So that's another option. If you've got all day, you could walk it with constant views of the river. You'll notice I've been showing you a lot of this train ride, but we're almost there. We'll be arriving in Engelberg in just a moment and then taking our cable car rides to the top of Mount Titlis to frolic in the snow. It's worth sharing the details of this scenic train ride with you because it really is spectacular, as you've been seeing. And the best scenery is in the final moment, rounding the bend coming into Engelberg town. Ironically, after watching an hour of scenery go by, you might be a little jaded and miss the grand finale. Then we level off and get to Engelberg, end of the line. Everybody out and walk a few hundred yards from the train station with the majestic peaks towering all around us over to the cable car. The Engelberg train station is at the end of the line, so there's no great rush to get off. The train is gonna be parked here for quite a while. So everybody leisurely gets off and walks along this platform. It's a small station. We're out here in a country town, Engelberg, is a place we're gonna show you a little bit more of after we go up to see Mount Titlis. It's a ski resort in the winter time, and it's a year-round destination because of Titlis. There's a post office in the station if you happen to have some things to be mailed out. This is typical of the Swiss postal services. They sell packing boxes right here in the station, very handy for the traveler. You could take a free shuttle bus from the train station over to the cable car which would save a little time because the distance is 800 meters or about a half a mile. It's an easy walk either way. It's a lovely walk as we'll show you, but take a look in front of the train station and see if the bus is there. You might as well hop on. You'll find that Engelberg has some pretty little gardens, nice houses and spectacular mountain vistas. Oh, yeah. After sitting on a train for an hour, it's good to walk, get out and stretch your legs get some cool, fresh mountain air, and walk over to the cable car if you like. It's especially pleasant along the stream, and it just takes about 10 minutes to walk over to the cable car. You can see the cable car is going up the hill from the road, and then you head right on into the Titlis Road Air cable car lobby. It's a relatively new facility they've created with bigger cable cars that easily hold six people, Escalators getting you there and a nice smooth direct ride changing cable cars only once Because I've been here so many times maybe 25 times in the last 30 years and Photographed nearly each visit. I have a lot of different kinds of moods and years of pictures to show you from warm green hills ranging over to snow-covered fields for example, if you're visiting in the month of May, which we often do, you can never tell. The ground might be covered with snow, or you might have only snow at the top with the glacier. You'll find out when you get there. But one way or the other, you'll nearly always have wonderful views. You'll be reaching an intermediary landing stage with a cable car, and at that point, you'll see they've got some scooters available. Now we're gonna take you on a scooter ride on the way back down the mountain after we get up to the top and frolic around in the snow. We got 2,000 more to go. And then we change cable cars to the bigger one. We all get in here together and stand. It can hold as many as 80 people. This is a rotating gondola. We'll be rising in elevation from 3,500 feet at Engelberg all the way up to 10,000 feet at the top of the mountain. It's a very clear sky, which is a great sign that we're going to have excellent visibility as we look deep into the heart of the Alps when we get to the top. Sometimes you'll have skiers on board because there's always snow at the very top, and the ski season is quite long here. With this round shape of the cable car, it seems like everybody can get a good view and get a piece of that window looking out. Dear guests, welcome to take this road there. The world's first gondola with a revolving floor. So we'll reach the top of Mount Titlis in about four minutes time. The temperature on the top is at the moment two degrees Celsius plus. I wish you all a nice and exciting day. Have fun, thank you for coming.
And then as we get to the top, it's that spectacular payoff that we've come to see. Mountains covered with snow. It's real easy to just follow the crowd. You get off the cable car and into the pavilion and take an elevator up a few flights to the viewing platform. That should be your first stop to go on outside to the open air terrace. And from there, you'll get some of the best views of all into the mountains. We'll be showing you many different views and angles during the program, photographs at different times of year and different viewing conditions. We're here at the top of Mount Kitlis, and it's a spectacular clear day today. You can see right into the heart of the Swiss Alps. It's called the Bernese Oberland in this section, and it's very much the center of the country. They call it a Mastiff. And the mountains we're looking at are mostly 12,000 feet high, even 13,000 feet high. A couple of the famous ones are the Jungfrau, and the Monk and the Eiger. Now when you're at the top of Titlis, it really only takes one hour to see the sights. You can look at the different viewpoints, especially in this direction. This is the main viewpoint looking into the main mountain range of the Alps. And there's other vistas and perspectives all around you. And then you can have a hot chocolate, maybe some apple strudel. And then there's also this terrace right over here where you can sit, you can have uh, uh, coffee, you can have snacks over there, and, and that's really pleasant. So there's a, a facility with four levels. It's got a restaurant, cafeteria, shops, and they make it very comfortable. They've civilized all of the mountaintops here in Switzerland and made it really a pleasurable experience for you. And then, of course, walking on the glacier is another part of the fun here when you're up at Titlis. It's not too cold sunny and snow all over the place. It feels like about 38 degrees, 39 degrees and very comfortable. Uh, it's a glacier so the ground is freezing. There's snow on the ground. You don't even need a heavy jacket. The idea is you uh, bring about three or four different layers of clothing. So it's just so comfortable and pleasant. Or maybe you'll run into some snow. This scene was photographed during an April tour. <laughs> oh, sure, shoot it. That's what it's for. The video is a combination of several different visits to the top of the mountain at several times of year, May and summer and in September. Good. Love it, love it! <laughs> 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 These magical sights put everybody in a good mood, so it's like a party up here. <laughs> it's summertime, but there's always snow on the top of Mount Titlis because it's a glacier. You can walk right onto the glacier from the Panorama Terrace and frolic in the snow. It's cold enough that the snow never melts, but in the summer with typical sunshine, you're going to feel comfortable with just a light jacket. Because Mount Titlis is the highest peak in the area, there's a huge telecommunications tower up on top of it. One of the most exciting attractions is called the Titlis Cliffwalk. It's a pedestrian suspension bridge that gives you these dramatic views looking all around and even straight down 500 meters beneath your feet. <laughs> wibbly wibbly. It's claimed to be the highest suspension bridge in Europe. And there's no extra charge for walking on it, so by all means, take advantage. It opened up at the end of 2012. It took them five months to build it, and it has become a really popular attraction, sometimes called the world's scariest bridge. It's really a little spooky for people who are afraid of heights. It's this open, metallic, very sturdy, walkway and you are just suspended between the peaks. This bridge is so popular that the concept has really caught on and expanded throughout Switzerland. Now you find quite a few of the mountain peaks that have an attached bridge or a outside metal walkway to give you some added thrills. It's opened up some previously inaccessible vistas with a relatively minimal effort. 
you'll get views from the SkyBridge that are slightly different from the main viewing platform. You could take this staircase down inside the glacier, walking through the ice tunnel, and we'll bring you there shortly in the program. But on the other hand, you could just turn around and walk back along the sky bridge and back out onto the snow fields for some more fun on the glacier and walk around a little bit more. Maybe even barefoot. Just walk, don't stand. Just walk, keep walking. <laughs> You can also ski up here. Even in the summertime, they have a summer ski school. And in particular, in the wintertime, there's many ski runs all around the mountain village of Engelberg. You can slide down the snowy slope on your butt if you like. Some people grab a piece of plastic or cardboard. And there's an inner tube ride that you can get to if you ride down on the ice flyer chairlift to the lower sledding area. If you feel adventurous, you can ride the inner tubes and you shoot down the hill pretty fast. It's really easy, anybody can do it. With all the different activities and vistas you can enjoy up here, maybe the best part is just walking around on the snow and then going underneath it. We are standing on a glacier. A glacier is a river of ice, it's compacted snow. And that's what we've got here. There's ice underneath us. It's, you'll see the ice tunnel goes through the ice. It's an ice tunnel that they've carved right into the foundation of the glacier itself. And there's lighting inside. They have some ice sculptures inside. And there's secure footing on a good rubber mat walkway. And it's a lot of fun. You walk in the tunnel and it goes around in a small loop circle just takes a few minutes but be sure to look for it the ice grotto while you're up top at that complex of cafeterias cafes and gift shops up on the mountain top surprisingly the temperatures are comfortable anytime between april and september well it's going to be freezing just barely and you really don't feel the cold in typical Swiss fashion, they have civilized this mountain peak and provided creature comforts while bringing you right into this wild, natural environment. The Titlas viewing platform at 10,000 feet has an elaborate multi-storied restaurant, cafe, and gift shop complex, along with a ice cream snack bar and coffee bar out on the terrace. The deck functions something like an outdoor living room with its comfortable seating, its benches and tables, and there's railings on both sides. So you have access to the interior restaurants as well as walking out on the snowfield from here. So it's really a central focal point of the entire experience up here at 10,000 feet high, providing the best single viewing point for looking into the peaks and also a terrific place to take your pictures. As several of my groups have enjoyed on recent trips. Just get your camera up high so you can see the mountain backdrop. Here comes a variety of views from that same vantage point on the platform looking out into the heart of the Bernese Oberland into the very central part of the Swiss Alps during different visits so you'll see some different lighting some bright clear skies, some slightly cloudy skies, and it really seems a little bit more dramatic when there are some clouds to enhance the mountains, framing them with some dark shadows and highlights. And if visibility is not so good when you first arrive up there, wait around, it'll probably clear up. The weather changes rapidly on the mountaintops. And we stay up here for about one hour, it's enough to walk around, have a look, take our pictures, and then we continue back down the way we came up. As you've seen, there's a lot to do up on the top of Titlis, so you could easily spend two or even three hours up here, especially if you're going to have a meal. But if you're a little pressed for time, one hour can do it. Get out there, walk around, take your pictures, and ride the cable car back down the hill. And for some more fun on the trip down by cable car, you can get off the cable car at the next to last stop and rent a scooter to coast down the final mile. It's just a simple stand up 
foot scooter, you hold on to those handlebars with both hands, and it's a wonderful ride. It goes around, zigzagging down on the road, which is at times a gravel road, a dirt road, but mostly it's a paved road, so it's really quite safe, quite fun. You've got good brakes with these scooters, so you can slow down, you can stop, take a picture. Don't try and take any pictures while you're moving because you've got to keep both hands on the handlebars and wear that little protective helmet that comes with the rental. The current price is 13 Swiss francs for the ride. And if you'd like to include a barbecue meal down at the bottom, that would be 35 Swiss franc extra in a nice package. For a slightly longer scooter ride, you can walk over to the Unter Trubsee station and whiz all the way down to Engelberg. No pedaling required, just hang on. The rides are offered between May and October. If you're here in the wintertime, you can rent an electric snowmobile riding on a closed track. It's so easy to ride the scooter, you'll catch on within a minute so that you can enjoy the ride and look out at the nice views as you go gliding by. Then return your scooter at the bottom and walk over to Engelberg. You can be back down in Engelberg by one o'clock, catch the train and be back in Lucerne by about two o'clock. One train leaves every hour. Check the schedule, perhaps at the station, before you go up to Titlis, that way you can time your visit and arrive at the train station in relaxed style to catch the train. Now, if you just missed the train, that's okay. You can go take a walk in Engelberg town. Maybe grab a bite to eat. It's just around the corner from the train station and it's really quite pleasant. The main street is for pedestrians. There are several bakeries and convenience stores that offer sandwiches to go. So that's a good plan. You can get a meal and then go catch your train and you can have lunch while you're traveling from Engelberg back to Lucerne. That'll save you some time because you're probably quite hungry by now and you do have that one hour train ride. So that's a good opportunity to both travel and eat. Or if there's enough time in Engelberg itself, there are some nice restaurants where you can sit down and have a good meal, such as the Spannert Hotel and Restaurant except they are closed between the middle of April all through the summer and reopen in the middle of November. It's a winter resort area, mostly for skiing up here in Engelberg. But you'll certainly find other restaurants and outdoor cafes and sandwich places here, or just some window shopping to poke around and kill some time waiting for your train. You could even spend a few days here in Engelberg. There are some hotels open year round, and summertime, there's hiking. They've got 500 kilometers of hiking trails. And in the winter, it is the largest ski resort in central Switzerland. They've got 14 ski lifts, 82 kilometers of downhill skiing. When you finish with Mount Titlis, you return to town the same way by train. Enjoying the scenery a second time in reverse, or maybe you'll be taking a snooze. Scenery always looks just as good, if not better, the second time around. You're going in a different direction, seeing it from different angles, and perhaps the weather is better this time going back than it was coming up in the morning. By the way, on the weather, you never know if it's going to be clear or cloudy at the top of Mount Titlis. Even if you check in the morning from your hotel, you ask the desk clerk, they look at their TV or they call the mountaintop, these conditions change radically. So within 15 minutes, within an hour, it can easily go from very cloudy to clear or vice versa. So just take a chance and go for it. Once again, passing by the Wurzfeli excursion van and it's just bursting with kids. They've just finished their excursion up on the mountain and they're coming back to the train. Fortunately, they have their own train car reserved, so they're not gonna be sharing our car. They're gonna have a lot of fun on this ride back to Lucerne and we will be able to see them, say hi, and then continue relaxing in our own car in quiet comfort. 
And that wraps up our grand visit up to Titlis from Lucerne. We have a lot of other movies about Lucerne and Switzerland in our series. Be sure to have a look for them. Our normal schedule on this afternoon is rest up a bit and then head out again by train over to Zurich. Another one-hour train ride. And there we spend the late afternoon and early evening wandering the beautiful lanes of that great city of Zurich. Look for that in our series, too, along with Interlaken, the Jungfrau, Zermatt, and the Ticino. 